Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. <clears throat> and this is Real True Street Grind. Let me say this to you. When you cocky is what we're going to call this one. When you cocky. When you cocky, as Maserati Rick did, you sit there in front of the police face, FBI officers, and make dope deals right in front of his face and laugh at him while he's trying to get you to flip and be a snitch. You busy getting it on right before his very eyes and tell him you don't need his help. When you're on top of the world and you're getting that money, you feel invincible. When you are cocky, you get up on the airplane. You know he's an FBI officer following you and you walk back there and you have a seat next to him and you tell him we're going to be seeing a lot of each other and you laugh at him in his face. When you do that, you are very cocky and you are making it personal. It is going to be no win in that game. The feds is going to win. When you get cocky, you ain't even got to worry about it. They gonna wind up winning. And that's what I'm telling you all. When you get cocky, you're on top of the world. You'll make statements. They ain't never gonna do it again. Ain't nobody never did this before. Because you cocky. And as I said to all of you, faces change, but the game stays the same. No matter how cocky you are, somebody getting millions of dollars selling heroin and cocaine right now. So the game never stops. When you sitting in penitentiary, the game is rolling right on along. Somebody else that jumped in the seat, took your seat, took your place, and now they cocky, just like you were. So when you cocky, as I tell you, it can make you sloppy. You get to the point thinking, can't shit touch you or nobody. And you get to hanging a little too long in the Broadway. And you get got when you get cocky. Money does that to you. Millions of dollars, it's hard not to get cocky. Because you feel ain't nobody else getting it like this. I'm the only one. And there's many other people getting means at the same time you are in many other cities just like you are. So no, it's a tale to be told in every city. So when you get cocky, rise up and spread your wings out like a peacock and you telling the world and you're not scared to tell them. You understand? That's when you get cocky and that money gets to your head. And that money sometimes can make you sloppy. Just being having that much money, you can fuck around and get sloppy and get got just because you feel you can't get got. Understand that many niggas be have taken out because they got cocky. And when he put them to sleep, they really believe that he was dead when he faked his death. That's cocky. When you fake your death, it's all over the TV. Demetrius Holloway then been kidnapped, shot up at the top hats, right there on 8 Mile in the Quinter. You understand? Then, after so many motherfuckers get to disappearing and coming up missing and dead, the fans really wonder, are you dead or have you pulled a hell of a cocky move. You understand? So that's when you cocky. You pull off moves like that because you feel invincible. Can't nobody touch me. You understand? D had so many beefs. It's hard to know who killed him until you all said that the feds put him in jail and convict him because he had so many beefs. Like Maserati Rick. It's hard to say that Elijah Parker was actually the one that got him, but for what D seen, that's believable because of what D said. But 
they had so many beefs. And the sad part about that was D really felt bad about it. And we talked about it after the Mazi guy got killed. They had done that same thing, that guy. Shot him up, put him in the hospital, waited on him to get out, and shot him and put him right back in the hospital. And Maserati fell for the same game he ran on motherfuckers himself. That was the sad part about it. He really didn't realize how serious. And the only motherfucker that really serious at that minute that really wanted him dead was Big Ed, because that's who put him in the hospital. And Big Ed was in the same hospital shot himself. Understand that. Big Ed had the hunger to kill these motherfuckers and spoke it in the free press and newspaper. Go look it up after he got shot with Operation Get Down. he tell you after he got shot, I'm not pressing no charges, nothing. I'm going to take care of both these motherfuckers. Demetrius Holloway and Maserati Rick, I'm going to take care of both these motherfuckers myself. You ain't got to worry about calling the police. I got this under control. And that was in the newspaper. That's a fact. If you look it up in the Detroit News and Free Press, after Big Ed got shot. So understand this, when you get cocky, that's what you do. You walk right up there to the newspaper, fuck that, I'm Big Ed, I'm announcing this shit to the world. That's when you get cocky. And that's when you know a big fall is coming. The feds is watching all that shit. All of this shit I'm telling you, the feds is monitoring it very closely. So everybody who cocky poking out their chest feel they can't be hit. It was a messy time that cocaine and Scarface brought out an awful killing feel every way or everywhere because everybody wanted to be Tony Montana. Scarface, a fictional character that we all hang on our wall. As soon as we talk about slaying cocaine, Scarface, Tony Montana is the first name come up. Al Pacino, Tony Montana, Scarface, you understand? A beautiful movie, but that's what it was. A fictional character and a beautiful movie. But he had real true street crime. We giving you real characters and the real true stories behind them. And as I tell you, you get cocky when you MGM Grand and you kill a police officer's son. That's awful cocky because you know every police in the city of Detroit is going to be coming after you. That's cool with that police officer. So that's cocky. And understand, remember this, the feds is watching and they coming too. So this is Eddie Jackson Jr., Real True Street Crime, telling you all, I don't like you hold you long. Go over to the tasting table and check out Jelani Tasting Table, a wonderful, wonderful chef out of Baker's College. Y'all better get a plate while he's coming up. Cause once he get up, you know how to get there. Prices go up on them plates, you understand, which is understandable, but catch him while he's coming up. A wonderful chef, you can have it catered. He can bring it to you, cater it, he can cater your event, or he can even give you some advice on how to make your dish taste even better. So Baker's Finest, Jelani, Tasting Table. Check him out. He's an excellent cook. I love his food. Every chance I get, I get me some of them fish tacos. But let me say this to you. I don't like to hold you too long, but please go over and check out our podcast on Crime Town, Kingpin's Kid. Thank you all for subscribing and taking the time to listen to me. 
because I truly appreciate you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you coming into this new year. Happy New Year's to all of us who made it. All praises to our lot that we made it into this new year. All praises to our lot. Let's move on and let's get it on in this new year as we move on. This is Real True Street Crime, Eddie Jackson Jr. saying to you all, I'm going to be seeing a lot of you all. Like, subscribe, and share. I'm going to be seeing a lot of you all. <laughs>